Right folks, I'm now on the bike uh, and before I begin as usual I like to go over uh, I'm Fletch. I'm here to do a review of this bike here, which is the Street Glide Standard. Now, the Street Glide was first introduced in 2006, and in 2009, they actually changed uh, the frame of this uh, particular bike. Now, in Singapore, uh, we are only would be able to own the Street Glide Special and the Street, and of course, the Street Glide Standard, and they've only just released the uh, 2019 uh, Electro Glide as well. So these are the three models. The reason being is that uh, Singapore has a weight restriction of 400 kgs that any motorcycle would be allowed on the road. So this is just under uh, the 400 kg range. So the Street Glide Standard and the Street Glide Special is allowed on the road. As you can see, this is part of the touring line. Uh, the iconic Batwing Cow. Uh, and it comes with the standard halogen uh, headlights. It comes with crash bars and actually the brakes are Brembo brakes so you have great stopping power when you need it and because this is a touring bike or part of the touring range as this is part of the touring range you can see that it has the rider floorboards uh, and of course it comes with hard saddle bags two up seats uh, passenger pillion pegs and this is a 107 cubic inch uh, Milwaukee 8 engine uh, which translates to about 1750 cc's and of course finally we have the large six gallon tank which you see in front of you uh, this equates to about 22 liters which should be able to get you about 400 odd kilometers to a full tank so right now what I'm going to do is uh, take it out on the road and give you my uh, impressions of the right, street glide. I'm now on the bike uh, and just before we move off uh, I like to be able to go through some of the controls really quick uh, before we take it out on the road um, so the controls on on this bike is pretty similar to the rest uh, in the sense that uh, you have uh, the horn uh, the flash and uh, high beam and low beam uh, on the right hand side you have your hazard lights your st start and stop button and your on and off switch uh, left and right uh, indicators uh, and if you can see close to here and over here you have some joysticks uh, which control the boom box that you see in front of you uh, and to tell you a little bit more about the boom box let's uh, check in with the blue bike and Doyle Hello everybody from Fletch Dino's page. Uh, he contacted me and wanted me to show y'all, you, uh, him, or, well, you know, uh, I'm going to say go up here and check out his page, but you already own it. So anyway, he wanted me to show you the GTS radio uh, in the 19, or newer models, the 19s and up, 
It's a newer radio. I had the 16. There's a lot of different changes, a whole lot to better radio. So uh, let me turn you around here and I'll show you the toggles. Yes, a lot of people think, well, it's the screen's way up there. It is a touch screen. I use it sometimes with touch screen, especially when I'm put, punching in an address and everything. So uh, let me turn you around and I'll show you and let the bike get booted up. Okay, everybody, on the left hand side is the uh, you, your home screen. When you push it, it goes back to the uh, home screen here, which is your radio navigation, your phones, and then you got your favorites, your headset, if you have one, which I don't. Settings and all. So, on the up, turns the volume up, then down, turns it down, and then to move through your your tracks to uh, your next song on your iPod or whatever you're using to control it, you go to push it to the right, it, you're advancing it, and then go back, you go back. And it's pretty simple on this side. On your right side, it controls your, your cursor. So if you was in your navigation or somewhere, or if you was in your music, let's just go there. If you was in your music, I can go up here and it lights up in the blue, if you can see it. Uh, what I'm light, highlighting. And then I can go right or left, that goes me to the songs. And then you just push it in to uh, select. And then you can go select and you can go up and down. That brings your, your uh, songs or your titles of your songs up. Or if you wanna go back. And then when you want to select, you move over, and then it highlights the songs, and you can search by, keep searching your E's, because I'm in the E's right now. But if you wanted to search the F, you just go over here, push it in to select, and that highlighting the alphabet, so every time you go, you go A, B, C, you know, and so forth. So, you know, your song starts with G, like Ghostbusters. You go down here, and then you push them in to select. It's pretty simple. It takes a while to get used to it, get your thumbs working together. And, uh, but it's simple. Left side, you volume up and down, and you advance in the songs if you just wanted to search the song. And then, uh, same way if you was in the, your navigation, this controls everything, your cursor, if you want to call it that, and then you push it in to select, like your navigation, and if you wanted to search. You can go up here and it gives you your location where I'm at. And then uh, if you was lost. <laughs> and then you go back over here and go up. And then you can search by name or by category or put your street address in. You can see it moving the cursor maybe. Maybe you can. But anyway, it's pretty simple. I hope you, hope you enjoy it. Uh, and I'm going to take it on a little spin, the same as I used to do um, for the other uh, for the other bikes. What I'll do is I'll take a little quick spin uh, around the city, and then uh, hit the highway a little bit, so you can actually feel the uh, the power and how smooth it is to ride the street glide. And then finally. Uh, I'm gonna take it on to the highway again and then back to uh, Harley-Davidson. So just like the other uh, uh, review videos I did, I'll stick to four topics to be able to then uh, fairly objectively uh, go through the various points and tell you how my impression of this particular bike is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do performance, uh, hand comfort, handling, and touring. Right, so let's talk about performance. Um, do excuse the way I handle this bike a little bit because uh, I, I believe that the seating position uh, and the way the, the floorboards are placed, um, I'm not so sure-footed at the moment. But I think once I get on the road and the traffic uh, has improved, I'll probably uh, ride a little bit smoother. This is a Milwaukee 107 engine, uh, which translates to 1,750 cc's. Um, I believe that the weight uh, fully laden or wet weight, as they call it, will be about 350 or 60. But I'll put up the uh, the specs for the weight, power weight ratio, and so forth. Um, honestly, 
I feel that this bike, just like the rest, even though this may be much heavier than uh, the other bikes uh, that I've ridden, I still can tell that there's enough power to go. Because again, when you look at, like say the car in front of me, for instance, uh, that's a two liter car. It's easily a ton. This is only about 300 odd uh, kilograms on 1,700 cc's. Obviously, there's going to be better power to weight ratio. Obviously, there's going to be better acceleration. You won't be feeling as if that you don't have enough power. I know that uh, you can actually choose between the 107 and the 114, uh, but the standard comes in the 107. So again, performance shouldn't be a, a factor when you talk about the 107 engine against uh, the weight and so forth. Uh, I haven't been able to take it up to the higher gears just yet because of the traffic. But uh, surprisingly talky, uh, a little bit different from the Heritage, uh, which surprises me again. Uh, maybe they require, maybe again it's about configuration and about the weight considerations. You probably need the horsepower uh, for the lower gears and that's probably why it's talky. Uh, again, it's a much heavier uh, frame and uh, engine. Hopefully when I take it onto the highway I should be able to then get a good feel on on how this bike performs which we're almost there. Uh, just that uh, strangely enough there's heaps of traffic uh, today but it does perform well. Uh, it's actually quite nimble surprisingly enough uh, but I'll go into uh, the handling portion in a little bit later on. Mm. I love these brakes. Uh, as I did mention earlier, um, there's uh, Bramble brakes come stuck uh, for all the uh, touring bikes. Uh, so it actually looks, uh, you, you actually brake with confidence. So, you know, when a light turns suddenly, because this is a, a traffic uh, camera situation for pedestrians. So, you know, it could just turn suddenly. Uh, but it's not about timing or so forth. So again, about performance, uh, talky in the lower gears, uh, there's still a lot a good pickup because of the talkiness. Uh, I believe again as I mentioned earlier This is about um, probably the configuration that they would have uh, As opposed to say a performance bike like the FSTR or breakout which is also talking in the lower gears But that is because you want to have the, the get up and go here. This is to be able to handle uh, fully laden right so because imagine if uh, You have a full tank and your luggage is full then you would have quite a significant uh, weight on it probably close to 400 already and you definitely need that kind of uh, low-end power to be able to push off from the bike and of course once it's on the highway it's just get up and go so let's talk about topic number two so in terms of comfort um, what I find uh, interesting is that this is a pretty big bike uh, and, and as I mentioned earlier or I'm not sure if I did mention it earlier but in, in 2009 Harley actually changed the frame uh, on these bikes so it actually made it a little bit longer it's meant to be able to then accommodate the new engine and also it's meant to probably put away uh, the exhaust heads and so forth so that there'll be less heat emanating from the bike uh, because the last thing you need to do is a really hot bike while you're riding uh, although we know that uh, Harley-Davidson is pretty notorious for uh, hot rides, <laughs> so to speak. As I mentioned, what I found really interesting was that, again, I'm 5 feet 11, maybe 6 feet in these riding boots. Um, you know, and, and my posture is pretty good. I'm not, I'm, I'm not too far back. Uh, I'm not, my arms are not too stretched. My arms are not too stretched out like this. Uh, but when I raise my feet to the floorboards, I realized that actually my knees are just about above the tank which you know as you can see here which is strange right so that would mean that uh, I'm a little too tall for this bike which I find pretty strange right so if you're 5 feet 11 6 feet and you're sitting on a bike like this and you know if you're up this high would, would mean that, uh, you know, I'm not sure how long you could be comfortable in this particular position. 
uh, I can't, I'm already far back as I can on the seat. The seats are really comfortable, they're really plush. These are the stock seats. Uh, but again, uh, I find it strange that I'm so high up. So anyway, as I was saying, as you can see, it's uh, my knees are above the knee uh, above the tank, and uh, I find that um, it may be a little uncomfortable, right? So if you're five eleven, six feet, say, and above, I probably suggest that you get uh, highway pegs on your uh, on your crash bars, and uh, or get a seat that puts you uh, a little bit behind or further back so then you get a little bit of more of a stretch and then your rider triangle is a little bit more better so to speak because again I, I, uh, this is a short test ride so you know ultimately I won't be able to tell you uh, whether it's really going to be uncomfortable or not so far I'm good because like I said the rider triangle in terms of comfort uh, I have my feet planted firmly on the floorboards it feels like my fleet are planted on the ground you know it's like riding on a couch but otherwise pretty smooth handling nice turns but we're still on comfort so let's not talk about handling just yet yeah uh, so I, I would probably suggest that either highway bars or, or get another seat that pushes you back a little bit if you're a much taller person uh, not highway bars but highway pegs so that at least you'll, be, you'll, you'll probably be then able to do uh, uh, a much longer ride without any discomfort uh, and I believe that probably uh, if you're shorter than if you're 5'10 and below then this shouldn't be an issue but otherwise very comfortable bike uh, I'm actually sitting in a very comfortable position uh, but and, and, and still on the subject of uh, comfort now to be honest most of the bikes I've ridden are uh, the sub 300 range uh, in terms of uh, weight and I was a little intimidated by uh, this bike uh, when I saw the weight on on this thing but honestly uh, it is all it feels slightly heavier only uh, again we know that Harley-Davidson bikes are very well uh, balanced uh, even at a stop like this, I don't feel uh, like I I'm going to have to fight it. So again, in terms of comfort, uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the way it was uh, configured. It does elicit a lot of confidence now. I feel so confident uh, riding this bike. Uh, when initially I had my uh, little bits of apprehension. Now let's see. Big bike as it is. Can I or can I not lane split? <laughs> no, I cannot because they do not keep to their lanes. <laughs> it's okay, you know, if I had a Sportster or the other bikes, uh, I'm not sure if the Heritage can make it through, but uh, definitely not this bike. Yeah. So we've covered performance and comfort. So let's go on to the next category, which is handling, right? So again, even though this bike is uh, sub 400 kgs or close to 400 kgs fully laden, I think it handles really well. Surprisingly nimble. I, I think earlier you could see me overtaking uh, some of the cars. And it was so easy to flick, right? See how nimble this is. Look at that, right? I could just flick it around. I'm taking the corner confidently it stays in the line and it's so well it's got a lot of power to go again you're talking about a 1700 cc bike I'm making my way as usual towards the uh, the highway but as you can see it, it handles just like any other bike uh, maybe it won't handle like a sportster I don't think but you know, with the soft against the soft tail line, uh, I think it can hold its own. Um, I'm sure that uh, once you've gotten to know this bike very well, you should be able to handle the twisties and so forth. Like I said, uh, 
the, the way it's balanced and so forth really, really elicits uh, confidence. Because uh, even though it's not a big bike, you feel confident riding it. Uh, I am very confident riding it. Right, so I'm now heading towards uh, uh, the start of a highway, a little offshoot towards the uh, financial district. Um, let's play tourists a little bit. Right, so for Road Rash HD, coming up on the left, you can see this is the Singapore Flyer. Uh, they actually have something similar in uh, England, in London actually. Right, there you go. Uh, now if this place looks very familiar and you caught the premiere of Westworld, it's because everything was filmed here. Right, a little bit of CGI and they changed it to the city of the future. And this is the Meridia Bay Sands as I'm always telling you about. Another thing I noticed uh, with the cowl and maybe my height, um, going back to a little bit to comfort, uh, that now I was traveling a little bit faster, was that I, I realized that this uh, particular shield that we have in front of me uh, actually creates a, a little bubble and I'm actually getting a lot of uh, turbulence in between uh, and it's mostly hitting my helmet. So probably uh, another thing to consider would be to probably get a slightly higher uh, shield to avoid that because you know you're touring you get something like this it's supposed to take just about most of everything off you that you're supposed to have a relaxing ride uh, without having been pushed back or, or worse still the turbulence hitting your helmet and you get a little bubble head uh, action going there which I think is not really a good idea so as you can see from the way I took the corners and, and how I accelerated and, and, and overtook uh, some of the vehicles that this, the handling of this bike is awesome. It could hold its own against probably some of the performance bikes and definitely all of the soft tails, maybe not so much the Sportster, right? Because that's a smaller, nimbler bike, lighter with a 1,200cc engine, so it just might have a little pickup along, but for the long haul, this would definitely beat it uh, for sure, right? So that's all about handling, and finally now we talk about uh, the touring portion of it. It's, this bike is built to go long distances, and that's what it's for. That's why it's called the Touring Line, right? It starts off with the Road King, uh, the Electric Glide, the Street Glide Standard, Street Glide uh, Special Ultra, Road Glide, Rogue Light Special and Ultra. Uh, these are all part of the touring range, fully fitted out. Configuration is a little bit different, uh, but if you want everything or most of everything, then I think uh, the Street Light and Rogue Light range is the way to go to. And in this case, the Street Light, uh, you've got your fairing, you've got all the controls in front of you to be able to tell you what you need to know. It comes with a navigation system, radio, and so forth if you need that. If you don't need that, maybe you can consider the electric light, which is a street light without all of the electronics. I'm not too sure, but I think it might have a cruise control. No, I can't see it. I would have to check uh, and then put it up if they have cruise control, but you know, I think it could be an option. Uh, it comes with ABS, so your stopping is uh, pretty good. It comes with a security option, of course. Uh, the seats, as I mentioned, are plush. They're two up already with passenger peeling packs, so you can already take your beloved or your special one with you on your rides. And most importantly is the luggage, right? So you have you have two hard case saddlebags. Uh, total capacity is rated at 2.5 cubic feet, which translates to about a total of 70 liters. So that's 35 liters per side. That's a lot. 
trust me, even if you feel that that's not good enough, you can always put a, a top box on the back and you become an ultra and you can tour for long distances, you put as much as you want uh, on this. But you know, honestly, 70, uh, 70 liters is a lot uh, to put on. Uh, even when I travel, uh, I think at the most uh, I've used about 40 liters or more, slightly more. So this is heaps, heaps more than you can put on. Nice. Love the way it takes the corners. So it's all kitted out uh, for a full comfortable ride to go on a long touring. I, can st I definitely can feel the, the wind from the, that's hitting my, my helmet. So I would probably suggest getting a clockworks or uh, a much higher windshield so that then you won't get the proper effect uh, on this. Anyway, that's uh, just about it for my review for today. Uh, I do hope that you enjoyed uh, watching and I hope that was informational for you. Uh, please uh, do leave your comments below and for those of you who own a street light, uh, give us your comments on how it handles and how you feel about the street light. Uh, and of course, if you're new to this channel, thank you for coming. And if you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to let you know about the next video that I'm putting up. Once again, thank you very much everyone and you all have a safe trip.